Per favore la good luck, thanks a lot the organizer for giving me this opportunity to present you my work that deals with the importance of the intrinsically disordered regions in modular proteins and uh, with the new strategies for the tailored drug design. The subject of my work is the nucleocapsid protein of SARS-CoV-2 that today uh, has been uh, mentioned a lot. It is an important example of modular protein with a very complex and difficult to study structure because it's highly disordered, composed of two globular domains and uh, three intrinsically disordered regions that represent the 40% of the entire protein. My work is focused on two particular constructs of this uh, protein that are the N-terminal domain construct, so one of the two globular domains, and the more extended one that, is com that comprises also the two intrinsically disordered regions that flank this uh, globular domain. This N-terminal domain is particularly important because it's the domain deputed to bind the RNA, so the viral RNA, directly. Um, However, the um, uh, precise binding mode of uh, interaction, the, the binding mode um, of this protein with the viral RNA is still unclear. And previous studies try to identify one possible site of interaction uh, that is supposed to be in this region that is highly positively charged. So we decide to uh, investigate this interaction uh, from another point of view with another molecule that is a peptide tailored for this uh, uh, interaction with this protein. So the um, design stage of this peptide started taking into account all the characteristics that we know about this protein, uh, in particular this construct of the protein, uh, that is characterized by two main regions that are an aromatic palm, so called because it's the most bulky uh, region of the protein rich in aromatic residues, and the basic finger, so called because it's the most flexible one rich in positively charged amino acids. We selected this um, peptide chain composed of two regions, one central part um, that has a secondary structure propensity to assume an alpha helix promoted by the abundance of leucine and also an aromatic residue in order to interact ideally with the uh, aromatic palm and two ends uh, of the chain uh, that, is more, that are more flexible and uh, negatively charged thanks to the presence of the uh, glutamic acid in order to uh, interact with the most uh, uh, flexible part of the protein. Uh, so we made a preliminary docking um, just to see uh, if, at, at least in theory, this peptide targets the desired uh, site of the protein, and then I synthesize this peptide exploiting solid phase peptide synthesis with the assistance of microwaves. So from this first peptide, I actually um, synthesized three other peptides with slight modification in order to understand which of the um, characteristics inserted in this peptide were actually essential for the interaction. For example, the aromatic contribution or the secondary structure. Uh, indeed, these peptides were also completely characterized with other uh, techniques uh, of um, NMR and other techniques uh, that are um, mass spectrometry and also circular dichroism for the secondary structure propensity. Uh, then these peptides were tested through NMR um, titration in solution, so adding increasing amount of peptide to a known amount of, of protein in solution and observing the different spectra, different point of the titration uh, that correlates the proton and the um, nitrogen uh, for all the amidic proton for each residue, and observing the chemical shift perturbation in the spectra that in this case uh, suggests us uh, the presence of affinity between the peptide and protein, but with a, a big amount of peptide, in particular nine equivalent of peptide. So the interaction exists, but is not so high. So um, we spent uh, some time to think uh, uh, how can we um, increase this affinity and also mimic the nucleic acid. 
And so the idea of uh, peptide nucleic acid arose in our mind uh, because the peptide nucleic acid, as you know probably, is a molecule that can um, mimic at the same time nucleic acid and peptide molecule. Nucleic acid because, uh, because of the insertion of the nitrogenous bases uh, on the side chain along the backbone and the, peptide and the peptide molecule because the backbone in this case is not composed of uh, phosphate and sugar groups but um, of uh, an amidic bond, so it's a, a peptide-like backbone. Uh, indeed, uh, usually this molecule is, um, binds uh, nucleic acid, but in our case, the innovative aspect of our work is that we don't have a nucleic acid as target, but uh, a protein that naturally binds uh, a nucleic acid, so an RNA binding proteins like uh, um, the nucleocapsid protein, the, uh, protein of SARS-CoV-2. Uh, so, we uh, started from uh, this peptide that lacks completely of the um, aromatic contribution. We maintain the two termini of the chain in order to maintain also the electrostatic contribution that we tested to be essential for the interaction. And we replace the central part of the peptide with four um, building blocks of PNA in order to uh, introduce also the aromatic contribution and mimic the uh, two contribution that drives the interaction between the protein and the viral RNA. And so we obtain a chimeric molecule in, in this way. So um, we perform the same titration in this case with this uh, new chimera. And uh, what we observe is that we uh, observe the same chemical shift perturbation for some residues, but the amount of uh, chimera um, that we need is uh, lower uh, with respect to the peptide. So we pass from nine equivalent to two equivalent of uh, ligand. Uh, I plotted the chemical shift perturbation against the residue number to highlight the region that is affected on the protein, that is the one that we expected in the design stage of the ligand. Then I reported this comparison because it's uh, interesting. Um, and these are two spectra of the same region. Uh, on the left, the reference spectrum of the protein in blue and one equivalent of peptide added. And on the right, the reference spectrum of this, the same protein and one equivalent of this uh, chimera molecule. And what we can see is that the region affected on the protein that um, are clustered in three main regions of the protein are the same in both cases, but the chemical shift perturbation values are higher in the case of uh, chimera as ligand. And uh, that, um, that uh, suggests us a higher affinity that is confirmed also by the KD of uh, uh, calculating from these residues that is uh, particularly affected by the interaction. So the last question is, but how about the intrinsic disorder regions? And so I pass from the expression of this end terminal domain to the expression of this construct that comprises also the two intrinsically disordered regions, and so uh, to a more crowded uh, spectrum. Uh, I performed the same titration in this case with this uh, more expanded uh, construct in the NMR tube, and I observed that the chemical shift perturbation. Um, values are higher in particular for the residues belonging to the intrinsically disordered regions. And also another effect that uh, I didn't see uh, in the case of the terminal domain alone, that is the big disappearance, in particular for the residues belonging to the terminal domain that in this case is flanked by the intrinsically disordered region. So uh, this suggests us a different kind of affinity, probably an higher affinity in presence of the intrinsically disordered regions. And also that the uh, flexible region more affected is, uh, most affected is uh, the IDR2, that also in literature is considered the um, most involved in the interaction. In particular, two regions of this uh, flexible um, 
link that are the polyleo region um, that uh, with the addition of, of only 0.25 equivalent to ligand show the um, completely disappearance of the of these uh, uh, residues and also the second region that are the SR rich region that is rich in uh, arginine so it's uh, highly positively charged that uh, show the higher chemical shift perturbation. So the key findings of, of this uh, work is that from the protein perspective, uh, we, confer we have the confirmation of the important role of the intrinsic isolation regions in the synergistic role in this kind of interaction. Uh, from the ligand perspective, we developed a new synthetic strategy to investigate the interaction of this protein, inserting all the characteristics that we want to test it in another molecule to identify the key elements that drive this interaction. And we did it uh, with peptide molecule and then we improved this molecule with the chimeric molecule. And uh, as a future perspective, I think that uh, this rational approach can be also extended to other uh, similar protein, in particular nucleic acid binding protein. So I would like to thank a lot uh, Isabella Caterina Felli, Roberta Berattelli, and Marco Schiavina from CERM that helped me in this stage of uh, expression of the protein and uh, NMR experiments and uh, Anna Maria Fatini and Michael Pagliata from the, the Department of Chemistry for the synthesis stage of peptide and DNA. And all of you for your attention.